Have you wondered how you can paint Studio Ghibli on your own? If yes, then this video is for you. My name is Ala, I'm a sketch illustrator and watercolorist. And in today's video, I propose to you to paint Marnie from Studio Ghibli. Uh, here to mention, the video is very long. Uh, to skip it to, uh, to be longer, I prepared the drawing already. You can download it in the box below. I will leave the link that you can download and draw it on your own. As well, I will leave there the reference, as you can uh, download it too. And here on this video, we will paint with watercolors together the background and the marnie itself. I hope you will enjoy the process and uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and share it. It will be really lovely to see your comments as well. Before we start, I would like to share with you the supplies that we will need. We will need uh, watercolors. I have my 36 pans of watercolors White Nights. If you don't have so many colors, don't worry, just use whatever you have, some colors that will be adjusted. You will need the plain water, a bullet, some tissues or paper towels, uh, a hair dryer, and obviously the watercolor paper with the drawing. Uh, I missed uh, out the drawing itself of this work on this video because it will be long enough and uh, I uh, decided that I will leave the picture of the drawing uh, below in the comments that you can upload it and draw it on your own, uh, on your path, uh, how you think it is more convenient for you. And then with me, you will paint in watercolors. I think that the drawing is not difficult at all. And if uh, it is still, then one of the things that I can advise you is that you uh, uh, print it and copy it uh, on your own. So let's get started with the painting itself. Ah, and I have missed out to mention about the um, what... Uh, paintbrush I will use. So I will use this flat paintbrush for painting, uh, for adding water. And with these two paintbrushes I will use to work on the background and then on the details. Let's jump in. First thing that I will do, I will wet the paper from the other side. So I'll wet it well. And we won't need a, a washi tape to adjust the paper. Waiting it well on the other side. And now once we are done with waiting it, I'm adjusting it on the table. And now pay attention what I'm doing. I will be wetting the paper again because you see that it makes this kind of part, but I will avoid to paint Marnie. So I will avoid to paint the girl. I'm wetting all around her. If it happens, like in my case, that uh, some of the water went over, take a tissue and dry it accurately. Wetting on the other side. Don't stay frustrated of this step. It is really important because if you are waiting well the paper, then the background will be beautiful as well. 
it is super important to read well the paper. Even if we don't add any color now, it will help us a lot during the next step. I think that I'm done. Let me know how I'm doing. So now I'm drying everything around. And I'm preparing the big colors that I will use on my palette. First color that I will use will be bright blue color. Because we are working wet on wet, we need that uh, uh, the color to stay in more intense because later on it will uh, light up, it will be lighter in color. So I'm not afraid to take straight away from my pen of colors and make it here. I will take as well some cerulean blue color. I think it is more convenient to take. Okay, bright blue and cerulean blue. You can take more cerulean. Cerulean works better, I think. With tissues, I try to remove the color where I have applied. If you pay attention, you will see that with this blue, uh, it is covered almost all around the girl, all around Marnie. And we can do the colors as we wish. We have some blue here and here. Here we have more work to do because we have the fingers and uh, I haven't wetted this side well because I knew that I will have to work with the color more. The thing uh, what uh, happened is that we have wet wetted both on both sides the paper because in this way we have enough time to work with colors and to adjust those to the perfect sky and that the washes is not mixing up badly and we don't have unpleasant um, lines of unpleasant parts. Here I have some blue but it will turn out into kind of purple color. Now I will take ruby color, it is red, and uh, ultramarine color to make this kind of mixture and start to create this beautiful cloud.
I will take more red here because we see it is more rosé. Let's take some carmine color. And I will mix it with ultramarine. Yes, I like it more this one. And we have some lighter color. More red. Taking care of the fingers and I have color like this here and then I have some golden colors too on this side. I will take some Titian red color and add it here to make it gold enough. You see how we can mix up colors pretty well and create really interesting details on the sky. I will add more cerulean blue here. Where I have white spaces. like this and as well we have some highlights later we will do these highlights but for now what i think that i will add more is some yellow color some cadmium yellow color and i will add it here that this golden color to stay even lighter i will add some here and here I have some gold color too. So the right side is more or less done. I will wait that it dries. And meanwhile, I will work on the skies that we have here. Here we have as well ruby color and ultramarine. Somewhere we have more red, somewhere we have more blue color. And I will start with the violet colors here. And then we'll finish up with adding more blue colors. Okay, same I will do here on this side and I will add some bright blue color here at the same time I mean I create these washes and I mix up different colors and everything I do super quick because I want to maintain this uh, beautiful transition from one color to another here i will add some yellow color i'll add here more yellow color adding more bright blue here Look wherever it is needed more color. When it is wet, we still can manage and create this transition beautifully and uh, that we don't worry of the color.
what I see here that we have some uh, carmine color so something like red color coming like this like rays so same you can do it oops and it's time for drying it with a hair dryer but meanwhile I will clean up my girl because here I messed it up with color and it is important that it is not getting any color that it stays white because if not later the color that we will cover will mix it up and will make it as some work to be done Let's try it together with the hair dryer. You see I have dried but not everything, still I have some parts that are still wet because as far as you notice the color is stays lighter and somewhere I need to intensify it. So I take a smaller paintbrush and I take a um, synthetics. If you have any other paintbrush just use it and here what I will do I will add more color. I want to create those more prominent. And it is important that the color stays dried already because if not, then it will mix it up or it will be removed. What makes it really unpleasant. I add golden colors now because I have some mix of golden colors too. Kirstitian red I added to the mix up with a ruby color and uh, with carmine color, sorry, and bright blue colors. Somewhere we see this uh, sky uh, really warm and uh, we do not see clearly the edge, but somewhere we see it clearly. So this makes it interesting. As well, I add yellows here. Now I add only, it is called yellow, straight away the color. Then I have some more violet colors here with more blue and I will make it I take a smaller paintbrush because it is easier for me, but look what it is easier for you. I have my tissue here and with plain water 
I make this transition smoothly that we do not have here this straight edge. We don't need it here. Yes, here we have golden colors. And I will add carmine, uh, cerulean blue color more. So I remove the intensity with my paintbrush. I added cerulean blue, but I see that the color is too intense. So I remove it a little bit. I want it light here. We can also add a take a tissue and dry it like this. In this way, we won't have it so dark. Okay, the color here I like it, only I need to intensify it on the edges, I will add here. Because the paper is dry, now we don't need too much color to use, because uh, the uh, when the, no, we work on wet and dry color, then the uh, the color is more prominent and we see it better. When it is wet and wet, then we need more color because already the paper is wet and we need to adjust it. Okay. And on the other side, I will take more yellow color, adding here and here. And then I will work on the clouds here. It is still wet. I need just to intensify the color. I take blue color, ultramarine blue and ruby color. And mixing up here, I start to go with this kind of movements and create again my cloud that with wet on wet technique disappeared a while but you see uh, it is even better because it created a beautiful background a beautiful base for us so not always it is bad that the color disappear sometimes it is pretty good taking more blue here You see, I'm not afraid of color. This side is still wet. This is the reason that I'm not afraid. If it would be dried already, then I won't take it so much.
I take a bigger paintbrush. Now I take once again the, paint, uh, the hair dryer and dry the work. Then we will work with the gold. Let's move on with the girl and let's look for the colors that we will take. For the hair, she has a beautiful ochre color. And we will take yellow ochre color to paint all over. Somewhere we have white uh, spaces, it is highlight. If you wish, you can, um, you can leave white spaces. If not, then uh, we will add uh, a white tempera by the end. Here I will leave it white because I see there is a white line here and it won't be necessarily from my side. Okay, and for the, her face, we will mix up with ruby color. So, ochre and the ruby. We take more water. Uh, pay attention uh, that you don't paint the eyes. I will add more water because I feel that it is too dark. Ochre color and ruby color, but with lots of water. Yes. And avoid painting the eyes. The same color I use for the hands.
here it looks like it is white but actually it is not white it is kind of really light green let's first paint here with green let's find this green color because it is an interesting green i think that it is emerald green let me check no let me check a mix of green and emerald green yes and if i add white color let's add more white color even more white so i mixed up emerald green with green color let's see if only with green it will but i think it is sufficient with green and white I'm working with my smaller paintbrush, but if you feel that you can paint it with uh, a bigger paintbrush, then, then use it. My size of the paper is an A5. I think that I will remove the excess of color. Okay, and we'll add it again with a bigger paintbrush. The color was too intense. Okay. The same uh, thing, the same mixture, just add a little bit of water because the color is just, just too dark if you add only green and white. As well, it is important that you prepare on your palette enough color. For example, in my case, I feel like I haven't prepared sufficient and I need to mix up again. I will try to avoid mixing up again, but uh, if not, it is difficult to find out the same tone. So when mixing up once and you prepare it once, it is easier for you to have one blending color that is not changing from one time to another. I think I did it. Yes, 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 yes. And I take my smaller paintbrush again and I take the same mixture but even more water even more so really light color so I add it here you see I remove it to the excess so I paint it that it doesn't stay white here on uh, this part I will paint only green color I will use. No, it is not green, sorry. I think it is olive green with green. Same, I prepare some mixture previously. I use green color with olive green. To make this color warmer you see so this is the color we need it over here
It is important that you prepare enough color on your palette that you are not coming back and preparing it again. It is very difficult to find out the same tone as you find on the first time. And then you see the wash is not consistent and not smoothly passing through one from one side to another. So now you can see that we have some darker color, lighter color, and now I adjust that everywhere we have the same color. Yes. Okay, to these details that we have here, uh, I will um, go a little bit later when the work will be dried. And now, uh, and here we have ruby color. And let's move on with the shadows and then with the details on the eyes. So now we have the shadows and we have the shadows. If the highlights are warm in color, then the shadows will be cool in color. And I will add some ultramarine color to get this shadow. I mix up the same color, okay. For example, here we applied ochre color, so I will apply ochre color here. And I have the shadow. It is important that the paper stays dry already. In my case, the hair is already dried. If in your case it is not still dried, please uh, dry it first and then go over again. Pay attention that even if the shadow is all over the face, I add uh, this color only on the hair because it, this is the cool color of the shadow on the hair, not everywhere. Then on the face we will have some ruby color too into the shadow. Okay. And now I will create the shadow, the same color. I will add some ruby color for the face. And we'll add some ultramarine and ochre color. Okay. And let's go little by little over the face here we have on the hand and here we have some shadows and now let's proceed with the shadows here here I have 
kind of shadow and then let's check out this color again so I have green color and I mix it up with white and to make it cooler I add some cold shimmering And I create the shadow. So I have the shadow here. Then I have shadow here. Okay, my hand is still wet and I'm not adding shadow over here because it needs to dry. Only if you are going super accurate that the color is not mixing. Okay, and we need some green color that I have here with olive green and I add now some wood shimmer into this mixture. And I do this shadow, a little bit of water, it is too dark. To remove, for example, this drop of watercolors from your painting, just take some tissue and remove it. Take more color. And here, now because it is dried, I can paint the details. I will take some raw sienna and because it has some kind of green color on it I will add some from here and we'll add color more raw sienna And I think it is more olive green than green. It is something in between, like this color. I will paint now the eyes. The eyes have a blue color. I will take cerulean blue color. It has the same color as the sky. Pay attention to leave the highlight inside less water, more color. It is super small. If it 
it happens that it runs all over just take your finger and remove the color or take a tissue I'll dry the work again with a hair dryer. I will add some shadows here. I will take some sepia and I will add some shadows here and here. Once again, I will take some ruby color with very few water and I will paint it in the hair. Now what we will do, a very interesting thing, I'm taking this flat paint brush that we used at the beginning and I will remove the color to create these beautiful highlights in the, in the sky. Remove it little by little, do not to go all over. I take very few water. It is wet, but it is not with water, because if not, it, the um, highlight will be too big. Again, I wash it. Very important that you wash as well your paintbrush, because it will leave the color that you have taken from it. Somewhere I remove the color totally, somewhere only a little. And now the last detail is that I will take a micron pen. I will take number five and I will cover once again all the color. My campaign number five, and I will go with outlining everything. I will add a tissue that I'm not missing, I'm not getting a mess because my hand is not as clean when you use watercolors. You can have unpleasant parts.
and that's it thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the process of painting marnie if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask me bye